This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2135, The Fallacy of Homeownership, by Julian Saunders of richandregular.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. The Fallacy of Homeownership by Julian Saunders of richandregular.com. To be American is to know and love taglines. They're the cliff notes of life that make you exempt from comprehensive understanding of a subject so long as you can drop that catchy sentence to buy you credibility for a few seconds. For example, it's not unusual for someone to speak passionately about the Constitution of the United States and to defend or critique it because, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness sounds good. Similarly, Martin Luther King and the I Have a Dream speech are practically synonymous. Yet most people have never actually heard the speech in full or actually read it from beginning to end. Side note, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness is actually a snippet from the Declaration of Independence. I digress. This same is true with homeownership, which has managed to maintain its position at the pinnacle of the American dream for years. Yet there's plenty of evidence to suggest that at best, home ownership is the equivalent of the WWF Intercontinental Championship belt. An accomplishment? Maybe. But for many people, it's the crown jewel of success because it's an investment and it'll appreciate over time. And we got a really good rate and we're going to grow into it. And I can always sell it. And we're building equity and on and on and on. Owning a home is touted as one of the single most important investments you'll ever make. But riddle me this, if home ownership was such a sure shot to building wealth, wouldn't we know more wealthy people? I know tons of miserable homeowners, but I don't know nearly as many wealthy people. I could unload for years against the merits of home ownership, but here are a few points that should cause you to think twice before jumping in headfirst to home ownership. Number one, the average home size has increased considerably over the last 17 years. By building newer and larger homes, the industry essentially forces people to buy larger homes than they actually need. This is also counterproductive given the size of American families has decreased steadily since 1976. Number two, despite the constant push by the media and banks about how affordable mortgage rates are, A 30-year mortgage is a commitment to paying 67% higher than the loan amount when you look at the total cost of the loan. Using a super simple example, assume you purchase a $100,000 home, put 20% down or $20,000, and borrowed the remaining $80,000 at a fixed 30-year rate of 3.8%. Your monthly payment is $372.77, but the total cost of that loan is $134,195.72. Put another way, you gave the bank $20,000 for the right to borrow $80,000, which will cost you at least another $54,000 over time. Keep in mind, you've not paid for insurance, repairs, furnishings, and other fees yet. This also assumes you have excellent credit and are eligible for that low 3.8% rate. As that interest rate creeps higher, so will the total cost. Number three, studies show that the typical American family may only regularly use 40% of the space in their homes. It's not surprising to know that the kitchen, bedrooms, and family areas are likely the most widely used areas in a home, whereas the additional sitting areas, dining areas, porches, extra bedrooms, and bathrooms are largely ignored. That's significant money wasted going towards property tax, cleaning, furnishing, and energy every year. And number four, the typical American only lives about 18 miles away from their parents. Now I'm not knocking the importance of family or the role the village plays in everyday life. However, if living near mama is a must have, then know that you're boxing yourself into the economic limitations that come with that. Over time, that can have a real impact on your ability to build wealth, get out of debt quickly, or take full advantage of job opportunities that lie outside of your comfort zone. So, 
In a nutshell, we're buying larger houses even though we have smaller families, paying at least 67% more than the loan amount over time, using only 40% of the thing, and not opening ourselves up to options outside of an 18 mile radius to be near mom because renting is throwing money away. In what world is overbuilding, overpaying, underutilizing, and limiting your options a recipe for success? To be clear, we're not knocking home ownership as a whole. Obviously, we're homeowners as well. The difference is we live small, have no debt on it, and can turn it into a cash-producing machine, also known as an asset, if we want to. When we do move up, we have the flexibility to go anywhere we want, including international destinations, without the pressure of finding a buyer and the benefit of a fantastic debt-to-income ratio. Also, we can afford to wait for the market to soften and have our pick of homes when, not if, they go on sale. Bottom line, you have permission to question your beliefs about home ownership. If you must buy, consider buying small. If you must borrow, consider a 15-year mortgage. Most importantly, think about the total cost of home ownership, not just the affordability of the payment. Borrowing the maximum allowable amount of money for a home benefits banks, not you. And oh, please, please, please don't let anyone tell you that renting is throwing money away. That's just another stupid tagline. You just listened to the post titled The Fallacy of Homeownership by Julian Saunders of richandregular.com. Ah, home ownership. For many of us, owning a home is a big part of the American dream, but it can also be a nightmare for the financially unprepared. I was recently at an event where we looked at two case studies of participants to help them with their financial goals and strategies. Before too long, it became really clear that both of them bought expensive homes that have now backed them into a corner. Both of them had mortgages that were more than half their take-home pay, and their cash reserves were minimal so they didn't have much wiggle room for maintenance and repairs. I think it's really worth questioning if buying a house is right for you based on where you are in your financial journey. In my case, I bought a house as a lifestyle decision after I was debt-free and investing heavily in retirement vehicles. And while I don't look at my primary residence as an investment, I was house hacking for about two years with a roommate who covered 90% of my mortgage. And I do plan to rent this house out in the future. Home ownership has high carrying costs, and if you need to access the money you have locked up in equity in your home, you either need to sell the house or take out a home equity loan, which creates more risk. I recognize the risks of home ownership, and so really only considered it after getting other financial goals out of the way, like getting out of consumer debt, fully funding retirement vehicles, and building up a year of expenses in cash. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.